So underway now, 25 laps, the split start, 18 men in the field. Others to watch out for include Dale Carroll, placed here in the Victorian 10,000 Road Championship that finished here at Lakeside Stadium. Others to watch out for, as we said, Matthew Clark, one to see Tim Vincent, Andre Waring, also a Victorian, Jacob Cox from South Australia. It's a quality field, Mitch. Yeah, it certainly is, Tim, and we're seeing a very similar approach to what we saw at the start of the women's race, and that is everybody bunch up, wait and see who wants to take the lead. At the front of it there is James Hansen. He's had an incredible resurgence back into Australia, uh, distance running, such a great story, and he's just going to lead out Jack Rayner right behind him there. Sam McEntee not too far of the way either. So too was Isaac Heen on the outside of them. Matthew Clark now out of South Australia. Jack Bruce not too far away either. Jordan Guzman tucked in the pack. So you can go through name after name after name and we just have so much talent in here. Andre Waring in a really nice position as well. And they're just going to find their feet here through the opening stages and, and try not to get tripped up or, uh, or do anything silly. So an emotional win for Hanson in the uh, Launceston 10 earlier this year. A big win for him there. Has he really brought himself to the forefront of 10,000 metre running in Australia? We're going to find out tonight, but because behind him is the man. You know, Stewie McSwain, out and out champion over the 10,000 metre distance, but the man we're seeing in second position there, Jack Rayner, he is the Australian record holder set earlier this year. And what a performer Jack Rayner is. He's looking to go back to back here, Mitch, and Hanson setting a relatively good pace. We'll get an update on that as we start to move through. I think Buden sitting there in fourth position. Uh, McEntee just sitting at the back of that first five. Isaac Haynes just at the front of him. A decent start, but we'll get a fix on the pacing as they start to move into this first kilometre of the 10,000 metres. Yeah, and Aaron Spiesberger Parker on the outside of there of Liam Boot, and you're exactly correct there. So James Hansen is still happy to lead it out, as you said. A really good dictation of this pace will come in the next 100 metres, but they're all tightly bunched at the moment. Couple sitting a little bit wide, which is fine early, but you probably want to try and find that position. Isaac Heen, one of the furthest out there towards lane two at the moment and behind him there is his South Australian compatriot in Jacob Cox so on the rail beautifully we should mention is Sam McEntee at the moment just looks so smooth he's on the inside there of none other than Tim Vincent and that is looking really comfortable in the middle of that pack so we'll let them keep rolling through here but this entire field is just looking really comfortable at the moment. Yeah, nicely bunched now we're 23 laps to go let's start to bring the, the, the crowd out onto the track once again so if we can get the rope carriers starting to make their moves. Now uh, we've been advised by MSAC no food or drink on the track so if you have got your hot cup of coffee or your Pepsi or your Coke whatever is your flavour uh, please leave or finish that before you go on the track so no food or drink on the track but plenty of crowd and plenty of crowd experience please yeah we certainly want plenty of noise as they make their way here through that opening kilometer around about that 302 pace so certainly everybody just feeling each other out at the moment they're swimming like ducklings on this beautiful blue track here at lakeside and they're certainly not trying to get rid of each other so james hansen nobody wants to go around him jordan guzman now works himself onto that shoulder we spoke about him in the pre-show here before all the events he's certainly one to watch he's Stepping up to that marathon, as we know, he's part of that Tim Man Elite group, and he's a really great performer. So if he can just keep himself comfortable, he's dangerous later. Matty Clark now puts himself in third position. Jack Rayner not far away. Buden on the inside of him. Vincent goes wider. And Andy Buchanan now starts to creep his way up there. So Jack Rayner finds himself in the pack a little bit closer to Sam McEntee, but it is still James Hansen, the Tasmanian, out in front. Interesting sideways move there from Jack Rayner, so I'm not sure what was going on there. Maybe just trying to avoid a bit of trouble. But now we're seeing the first of our moves too, and it's quite an, uh, an aggressive mood, move as well. As we see Guzman deciding he wants to just take that pace up. They were sitting on 30 minutes pace. We're looking, we'd want a 28 minute race here. Look at that beautiful sunset over <laughs> Lakeside Stadium. One of the highlights of Zatapec Night is just watching that beautiful city skyline coming into view while we see these 25 laps underway here at Lakeside. And it's Jordan Guzman representing Malta. Made that big choice a few years ago. Doesn't regret it. He's been to the world indoors wearing the Maltese colours. He set some national records indoors for Malta just a few months ago and Guzman as we said stepping up to the marathon 65 minute half marathon just last month and Jordan's decided he really wants to go for it. Hans has decided he's just going to sit back and uh, 
And Rainer, Rainer's just being smart. Yeah, he just edges a little bit closer, doesn't he, Jack yep. Rainer? He doesn't want to be caught behind the pack. It's very early. But Jordan Guzman, he's been training with the likes of Reed Fisher, who obviously did so well in New York. He was one of the top Americans there. And he's now just going to try and extend away from this pack. He's tough. This is a hard way to run a 10,000 metres. But we mentioned that he was probably one of our wild cards coming into this because we hadn't seen what he'd done over the 10,000 for a little bit of time. And that lead now is just stretching further and further. And nobody seems to game to try and pick it up in any sort of rush. I think if somebody might do it, it could be the likes of Matt Clark or a Jack Bruce in the middle of that pack to start to move through. But at the moment, the pack's comfortable. Jordan Guzman, even more than that. Very interesting move at this stage, I think. And I don't think Jordan would have planned this. He's just put the foot on the accelerator and uh, decided to just go for it. And the pack has decided to let go. He's a 28-39 10k runner so don't disrespect Jordan Guzman but as we know still coming through with 20 laps to go so the 2k into the journey just about we'll get Ross to hit that button in a tick we'll get a lap split on what Guzman's doing at the moment as we go through the 2k in a time of 5.55 so they ha he's picked up there probably a 250 that kilometre and a 60 second lap yeah, so 67 they go. he's going through at the moment. That's his lap pace. So the pack behind, probably sitting on around that 70, 71s, I'd say, Mitch. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really big move there from Jordan. And you're mentioning what he can do. He's a 337, 1500 metre runner, 13, 21, 5000 metre runner. He's got the wheels in his legs. And if he is training for that marathon, he's run a half marathon recently at that 65 mark. You'd think his aerobic capacity is going to be quite good at the moment. So if they're going to spot him this much room, they're going to have to be mindful through the middle of it. Jordan Guzman might just find himself in a very comfortable position. So he's just starting to extend away, happy to keep it ticking over around that 67 mark as now we see Jack Rayner go, all right, maybe we need to start reeling it in a little bit. James Hansen, happy to just sit off the back of him. So too, Matt Clark. Have a look at the calibre behind them. You've got Sam McEntee, Andy Buchanan, Jack Bruce on the inside of them is Vincent Andre Waring, not too far away either. So these guys, it's follow the leader at the moment of Jack Rayner. will get behind the national record holder maybe he can pull back this distance to Jordan Guzman. Now Rainer definitely not panicking. Rainer in control but just starting to pick that pace up there's no doubt about it. So he's the man who's driving the train there. Hanson, Clark, McEntee sitting on behind him. You can see Buchanan, Buden also in there the Queenslander. So still nicely bunched. Stote and Reed at the back of the pack at the moment the two Bendigo bats. So good to see the Bendigo representation also with Buchanan in the field. But out front Guzman been talking to him during the week and he just said he's come to Melbourne this time just to see where he's at. No big intentions in the Zatapik. He just wanted to get a feel for where the marathon training was taking him and how comfortable he'd be over the 25 laps. And as we're seeing at the moment, he's very comfortable. He's so. looking really comfortable, Tim. And have a look at this though. Jack Rayner doesn't want to let it get too much further. So he's going to see who comes with him. It was James Hansen and now around the outside of him is going to be Matt Clark. So Clark just latches onto the back of Rayner. McEntee going to do the work to get on the back of Hansen and he'll pull through a contingent of 10 with him. So it's Jordan Guzman. He's still got a bit of a gap here. Just has a quick look around the shoulder just to have a feel of where his competitors are and Rainer doing some good work to get on the back of it. You mentioned he doesn't panic. He is so good at switching off in these positions. Jack Rainer, you talk about aerobic capacity. He paced Brett Robinson through a lot of that Fukuoka Marathon only weeks ago to break the national record. So he's certainly in form and now he's going to bring through a good 13 competitors with him to try and latch back on to Jordan Guzman. And I wouldn't be surprised if Guzman is deliberately taking the foot off the pedal, wanting a bit of company this early stage in. Very impressed at the moment with Jack Bruce at the moment. The taller figure just sitting behind McEntee. So Bruce, great pedigree. You know, we know the quality of Jack Bruce. Had a few ups and downs during 2022, but good to see Jack out here and really looking very smooth. Andy Buchanan, Liam Boudin just off the back of him. But the gap now to... Guzman, he ran a 70 last lap, and I reckon this is deliberate. I think he wants probably a little bit more contact. He didn't want to be out that far that early, and he'll want to be part of a very aggressive race once they all start to come together again. Yeah, and they've done a really good job of being able to bring that back. So Guzman takes one more look on the inside shoulder now just to see where everybody is. And Jack Rayner, happy to let Matt Clark on the inside just go through a little bit. James Hansen has been in a really good position, but one of the best to do it at the moment is Sam McEntee. He looks really strong in that pack. Andy Buchanan making his way through. 
Isaac Heen as well, just through the middle of that now, starting to make his presence felt towards the front end of this pack as Jordan Guzman moves out to lane one, almost to say, all right, boys, I've got you moving now. I've let you know that I'm here. Let's get this thing going. So Matt Clark comes up on the rail. He's going to take the lead. Guzman tucked in beautifully on the shoulder there. Heen made the move in the middle of it on the outside of Rayner, and it's going to be James Hansen who finds himself on the inside of the tall, looming figure of Sam McEntee. And Sam McEntee is not looming anymore. He goes straight to the front. So the tactics at the moment are getting interesting. This next lap's going to blow it open a little bit, I think. It is all tactical at the moment. So Jordan's drifted back in. Hain made a very good move to get up there. He's just not too long off a of stressy. Just a little bit of a push there with his team tempo mate there, uh, Matty Clark, as they go around the bend, approaching our fantastic crowd out near that water jump and building around to the 50 metre mark. Good to see such good numbers out there. A few little cracks at the back starting to form, but McEntee just setting the tempo quite nicely. We'll get a fix on lap paces. They're running around 72, so it certainly isn't quick. Uh, they're sitting around the 30 minute pacing at the moment, or just under. It's going to develop into a real championship race. Yeah, it certainly is almost like a fart lek at the moment, isn't it? They're just trying to gauge the pace. Sam McEntee, he's at the front of it, but not too far away is the entire field. So it hasn't broken up really whatsoever over nine laps now. And Sam McEntee finds himself at the front of it. You're seeing guys now running out into borderline lane three in the middle of this pack. So everybody trying to jostle for a position at the moment as McEntee now just puts his foot on it a little bit and he's going to nudge it forward once again. Clark in no real rush to try and bridge this gap. Hanson behind him so too Rainer Buchanan and on the inside of them is going to be our competitor from New South Wales Hain not far away either and Guzman who was leading this event only a few laps ago now finds himself tucked in that pack Jack Bruce right behind him. Well, they did drop to a 70 second, 77 second lap there um, and even you could keep up with that Mitch at this stage that's why we saw the concertina effect. Everyone was back in again, and then McIntyre just lifted it slightly. Andy Buchanan's the one who's taken the, uh, the initiative to move forward. Timmy Vincent's going to the outside as well. I think that's Vesberger to the outside of him. Guzman now sitting right in the middle of the pack. Jack Bruce just having a look around. He's content to sit there. Dale Carroll, haven't called him at all, but he's sitting right off the back of Guzman. As they come through and they get 15 laps to go, they're at the, uh, that must make it the four kilometre mark. Certainly does. And now Sam McEntee obviously had a plan and he's going to try and execute it. So he's going to see who comes with him. It's Buchanan right behind there. And if you're the pack, you're very happy to see Andy Buchanan in front of you because he is one of the tougher competitors in this race. So he will be happy to try and jump on the back of Sam McEntee and not let it get too far away. It's Maddie Clark there in third position, looking really strong behind him is Vincent Hansen, just a tick behind him there. It is going to be our New South Wales competitor and behind him is Heen. So watch the move now. Jack Bruce starting to come up a little bit. Jordan Guzman coming up a little bit and we haven't said his name much but we're about to here comes Jack Rayner he starts to move around the shoulder now he's up on Hanson he might even just creep up on Vincent Vincent's not enough he goes for Clark so now this pack is starting to become a little bit more aware and edge forward and now we're starting to lose a few competitors out the back yeah, I think uh, Jack Rayner just wanted to get out of trouble. He was too far back. There were too many around him. He's got into clear space now. Buden's the one who's uh, taken the move with him. Impressed by the way Jack Bruce also responded there as well. So this is really starting to build as a race. Jack Rayner now starting to really become a player and McEntee setting a very nice tempo. He certainly is. He's, he's not getting chopped and as a tall figure with very long strides, that's such a benefit in a race like this. So Sam McEntee has free room to be able to move and behind him there is Andy Buchanan now starts to come Rainer. Not too far away is Clark. In fact, nobody's too far away from this sort of pace at the moment. James Hansen just on the outside of Vincent there as they start to just move around ever so slightly. Apologies, it's Liam Buden on the outside now. So Jack Bruce looking really comfortable on his shoulder. Andre Waring as well just on the back of that. We talk about people that have pace. Andre Waring been able to develop that over the last few years. Guzman 337, guys low 340s. We got 13, 25k run in here so there's certainly plenty of pedigree and Sam McEntee don't forget he's an Olympic 5,000 meter competitor and he's starting to stretch it away a little bit so we're seeing running around the 70 71 mark at the moment so the pace still not super hot but uh, it's enough for McEntee just to get that little bit of a break Bruce sitting nicely in that mid pack they're all still in there Norman's still there Waring's alongside him Clark just sitting behind the pairing of Buchanan and also Rayner as they come through. 
So a 68 second lap, so the pace is starting to go. It's similar to what we saw in the women's race, we're approaching that halfway mark now. We're about to hit the 5k zone, and it is not going to be a super quick night here tonight. They're not going to challenge that world um, championship qualification standard, and Jack Rayner is the one now who starts to really pick up the tempo with Buchanan and also Matt Clark, the ones who are starting to go with him. Yeah, absolutely. So Rayner now just going to go after McEntee, and as you mentioned, behind him, Buchanan. Matt Clark running a really smart smart race too. He's had a really impressive year, Matt Clark. He was a Would national champion over 12k on the road with 34.22. He was second behind Jack Rayner with a 63.26 in Melbourne at the half marathon. He was ninth at national cross country. He's not just a track runner now as he starts to move up in that third position and bring a couple through with him now. It's still Sam McEntee and Jack Rayner at the front. And have a look at this. James Hansen, Matt Clark, Jack Bruce all start to press up right on the shoulder. Jordan Gusman. I'm loving the fashion statement from Hanson from Tasmania. He's worn the arm warmers here. Cool night in Melbourne. Probably cooler in Hobart or, or Launceston. Uh, but uh, he's looking a treat. And as I said, a great victory for Hanson in Launceston, his own hometown. Great to see that victory here over 10K earlier this year against a good field. And I think Hanson's going to be a really good... Um, so 14.50 though through the halfway mark, I think it's going to be a matter of how far are they going to negative split this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're going to really start to stretch it out. In fact, they've already started to do that as we see this pack slowly but surely starting to separate just a little bit. Still plenty of competitors involved with it and Sam McEntee is right at the front of all the action. Right behind him there is Jack Rayner, Matt Clark on the outside, Andy Buchanan there, James Hansen. We're looking at so many competitors still in this race. Liam Buden for the likes and also behind them there is still Jordan Guzman. Jack Bruce just trickles his way in front of him there too. So you have a look at this. You're almost just waiting for somebody to burst out of this pack and really make this a 10,000 metre as Jack Rayner now gets given the rail. Sam McEntee goes to the outside and James Hansen not too far away. Clark tucked in beautifully. It's going to be a really interesting next few kilometres, Tim. It certainly is. So it is the training partners there, McEntee and also Rayner. Hanson, the next one to make the move. Jack Bruce back into the action. Starting to have a few dropped. Dale Carroll looks like he might be just starting to ease back with Nathan Stoat. So Carroll, big run here at the Lakeside 10. Stepping up to the 10,000 metre Australian Championship here tonight at Lakeside Stadium. We're seeing Doherty from the ACT, Team Telford. He's sitting at the back of the pack at the moment. Spesberg and Parker just sitting to the outside. Jack Bruce having a look over his shoulder to see what's happening. And he'd see the Spesberg and Parker just coming at him. Guzman sitting beautifully into that pack now. I think very good strategy from Jordan just to drift back in, not expend too much energy out there too early. And what will we see from him at the end? This is going to be something special. This is going to be a barnstorming finish, I think, here in this men's 10,000 metres. And you know what? They're all ready for it to happen. They've all been waiting around. They've had their moments to get to the front of this. They're going to let the defending champion take them through here in front and let him dictate the race. Behind him there is Sam McEntee. Matt Clark on the inside there too. James Hansen not far away. Andy Buchanan, who was seventh in the, mar uh, the marathon at the Commonwealth Games as well. Guzman now starts to feel the pressure creep up a little bit. He's just going to make his presence felt right there on the shoulder not too far away Andre wearing towards the back of the pack so too Jacob Cox as we start to lose a few more but here we go we talked about turning the screws we're flicking the light switch on this race at the moment and watching it spark up all right 10 laps to go so let's not get too excited yet Mitch so keep the volume down but anyway the race is certainly starting to liven up and I think this is now going to be the test of character the next few laps who can hold on to Rayner Rayner wants to win this he loves this event he wants wants to take the national title once again but there's very good performers sitting just off the back of him here who can kick down with the Australian champion who knows we're going to find out over the next 10 laps yeah I think this will be interesting here the, the part I'm looking at is where Jack Bruce ends and Andy Buchanan starts will that stay together or will that be something that separates over these next few laps have a look at this crowd on the athletics track as well it's certainly building and the atmosphere is starting to lift so they go into single file now they give each other some room it's the defending national champion Jack Rayner leading out Matt Clark Sam McEntee not far away Jordan Guzman poised beautifully there so too James Hansen Jack Bruce Andre Waring makes his way around he wants to be involved and it's just getting faster and faster well you say that it went from a 71 second lap to a 64 second lap thanks for that Ross and they are starting to really lift the tempo and this is what we're seeing the crowd 
cracks will start to form. Sveisberger Parker, I think, is one of those to start to drop off. Harry, uh, looks like Norman has also gone as well from that pack. So Reed is uh, stepped off as well. So it is looking exciting out front now as Matty Clark wedges in between the training partners. Guzman in beautiful position. All the names we want to see up there are up there, Mitch. They certainly are. All the names that we mentioned before the race are now starting to make their presence felt. And one that we probably didn't talk about, or two we didn't talk about a lot, was Waring and Hain. They're just at the back of this pack as well, looking really comfortable. And you let a lot of people into the race when you do tend to start it off a bit slower. So as they start to ramp it up, if you found a rhythm, now's the time to execute. It's Jack Rayner, the defending champion, the two-time national record holder this year, just leading out Matt Clark, Sam McEntee, Jordan Guzman, James Hansen, Jack Bruce. On Andre Waring, Isaac Heen, Andy Buchanan, and on the back of that is Boyden. So this is looking really good at the moment. They're strung out beautifully, and now we're going to start to see that injection of pace just drop down on the accelerator a little bit more at the front of it here from Jack Rayner. Decisive move. So what was 67 for that lap, and what we're seeing now is some big cracks starting to form. So Rayner and Clark, as we said, Clark is fearless. He doesn't mind duking it out there with the best in the country, and he's got the best at the moment. Jack Rayner is our Australian record holder. But Matty Clark's the one who's decided, I'm going to throw it down as well. The gap now stretching out to a good 20 metres or so, or so probably 15. And we're seeing McEntee, then Guzman, Bruce looking strong still, wearing, uh, battling on nicely, then Hanson and Hayne behind him. They certainly are. So these two here are just going to try and duke it out and see if anybody wants to come with. And Jordan Guzman puts his hand up in the pack and says, fine, I'll do it. So he's going to try and bring them through here at the moment. There's a good contingent behind him. Andy Buchanan starting to drop off the back of this secondary pack a little bit. Andre Waring approaches the shoulder there of Jack Bruce. But it's all in an attempt to try and stalk down these two in front. It's Jack Rayner and Matt Clark right on the shoulder of the defending national champion as they make their way up this back straight. Plenty of running left to do here in this men's 10,000 metres out of peck, and maybe, just maybe, they can claw their way on the back of these front two. So Rayner making these 64 second laps look relatively comfortable, similar to what we saw with Pompiani in the, the uh, women's 10,000 metres, and it is Jack Rayner just ploughing out 64s thereabouts, and Matt Clark looking so comfortable sitting on the heels. And that's the thing, Matt Clark does look so comfortable. We see it here on the screen. He hasn't really grimaced yet. He takes a little bit of a look around. These two have the benefit of seeing this board up here as well, so they'll know what's going on. But Jack Rayner looking smooth, Matt Clark looking smooth, Jordan Guzman trying to bring the pack through or at least get them moving fast. There's plenty left to happen over these final six laps. So Jack Rayner leading out Matt Clark. Jordan Guzman leads out Jack Bruce, followed there by Sam McEntee, Andre Waring, James Hansen, Isaac Heen, and Andy Buchanan starting to slide off the back a little bit. So you can feel it now. There's energy coming off this track. And I think Jack Rayner and Matt Clark are starting to ramp it up one more gear. They certainly have. It was a 66 last lap, so they're just sort of vacillating around that 66, 65, 64. So it's just moving around slightly, but Rayner looking good, but there's no signs. Well, maybe there is a sign that Clark, because you just see Rayner just pushing that little bit there, and now Clark's being challenged. And Jack is the class athlete in this field. He can test it. He can see who's ready to come with him. He looks poised to be able to launch himself off here as he starts to separate just a little bit. Can't miss him in those pink shoes and the famous moustache as Rainer now just really starts to go through the motions. So Clark's still in second there. Guzman still leading out this contingent behind him. Jack Bruce, Andre Waring. It's Sam McEntee, James Hansen and Isaac Heen on the back of that. But at the moment, it's your defending champion just starting to flex his muscles a little bit. So two kilometres to go. Jack Rayner 23.15 at the 8K mark. And a 62 lap, second lap. That was the breaker for Matty Clark. It just took a 62. And that's where we're seeing that separation. We now see Guzman. Guzman from Malta. He's leading the next pack. He has got Jack Bruce right on his heel. Also up there at the moment, we have... Sorry, I think that is Waring. So great run from Andre Waring. He's really showing his form here. He's got ahead of McEntee, the Victorian 10K champion, also Hanson. 
Jack Rayner was not interested in letting this go on any longer. He just wanted to see whether or not Clark could jump on the back. So he's done a fantastic job, Clark. Still sitting in second position there. Guzman leading out. Bruce and Waring. A small gap back to Hanson now. McEntee starting to go backwards. Heen goes around his shoulder. As we come down the home straight, it's very quiet. Lots of people, but very quiet. As Rayner now just starts to stalk away a little bit. Clark still charging down the home straight. It's Guzman, Bruce, Waring. Bearing, trying to get on the back of the second place getter, but at the moment, Jack Rayner has a look down at his watch and he might really let it rip now. The gap, yeah, 64 lap once again, so nice and consistent there, Jack Rayner. As we know, this guy's got the Australian record. He can run into the 27s, the slow pace tonight. We knew he had the ability to kick down, he's doing just that. Interesting that Clark's now in no man's land, but not there's not much happening behind to really bridge that gap. So Matty Clark sitting comfortably at the moment in second, four laps out. Then it's the battle for that bronze medal. It certainly is. Clark has a brief look on his inside shoulder there just to see where everybody is. There's three trying to come after him at the moment. Jack Rayner has put his foot down and stamped his authority. He's going to try and send it a little bit further along. So Rayner looking smooth. Clark behind him. Now it's Guzman. Bruce wearing, starting to get the better of Heen, Hanson and McEntee as they try and claw their way back. But at the moment, it is the class of Australian distance running teaching a lesson. It's Jack Rayner with three laps to go. He looks smooth and on his way to potentially repeat here in this men's 10,000 metre. A lot of interest now in that chasing pack. I'd say Clark is just starting to feel the effects of that pace when he's tracking along with Rayner. And we're seeing Guzman, also Bruce and Waring there ready to pounce. Bruce looking fantastic. The taller figure sitting in the middle of that pack. He looks like he's ready to go at any stage here, Mitch. He certainly does now. They're sort of biding their time a little bit. They're trying to come after Matty Clark in that second position. But up the back straight, it is all Jack Rayner. So he's going to keep on extending away here. Jack Rayner, Matt Clark in second. Guzman, Bruce, Waring, getting the benefit of working off each other. Clark might be able to jump onto that if they're able to catch him. Heen is now leading out McEntee and Hanson just off the back there. Buchanan fighting on strongly. But as we start to approach this home straight, it is all Jack Rayner. He has a commanding lead here in the men's 10,000 metres and he looks set to join history as a back-to-back -back champion. He's in the groove at the moment, 243, 242, 243, the last three kilometres and we're just seeing Jack Rayner two laps out looking so smooth. So get prepared here, back-to-back -back wins Jack Rayner as we're seeing a lot of moves here. Clark's gone right back through, so now it's a battle of Andre Waring has gone into second position. Bruce has gone with him. This is interesting. Well, Andre Waring finds a gear and he says, come with me. Jack Bruce, the only one that can at the moment. Guzman behind them there. Matt Clark starting to slip back a little bit. If you don't like what Jack Rain is doing, then you don't like distance running. He's up the back straight at the moment. He's got a 100 metre lead on Andre Waring, who's trying to break the spirits of the Queenslander behind him in Jack Bruce. Guzman starting to drop back ever so slightly. It's Heen up the back straight. McEntee, Clark and Hanson. But as we go over to the bend with the crowd, I can't can't even hear them, but Jack Rayner is putting on a clinic in this men's 10,000 metres as he enters the home straight for the second last time. So come on, let's get behind our Australian record holder here. So Jack Rayner coming here round to hear the bell. Fantastic effort here from uh, Andre Waring. He started life in the F grade 1500 at Milers Club. He's now on the biggest stage in Australia and he's on the podium. So Andre Waring, second in the big champs at the moment. He's got the Queenslander just behind him, one lap to go. So it's going to be an interesting battle for second and third. But at the moment, as we look at the back straight, it's Jack Rayner. Rainer wearing, making a huge push around the bend, but Jack Rayner looking so comfortable up this back straight. He's broken the road record. He's broken the 10K record on the track, and now he looks set to etch his name into the history books once more. It's Jack Rayner, 200 metres to go, 28.15 on the clock. As he approaches the crowd, we stand and salute Jack Rayner, who will try and go back to back in this men's 10,000. He'll become the eighth to do it. Ron Clark twice, Ian Blackwood, Andrew Lloyd, Monaghetti with four in a row, Luke Kep Kepsagai, Emmanuel Bett and Stuart McSwain and maybe just add one more name to the list. It's Jack Rayner as he salutes.
it's the crowd. Look at Waring come down the home straight, but it's Jack Rayner's moment, and he's back to back. Andre Waring now comes through for an emphatic second place, and now coming down to the line for third will be Jack Bruce, the Queenslander. But what a performance, what a runner, what a champion. Great performance. As expected, controlled the race. So Jack Rayner, let's give him that big... Uh, Jess, give him the uh, banner to hold up. It's going to be a good photo opportunity here. So Jack Rayner takes it out once again. What a performance. Andre Waring, what do you say? As I said, started off in the back blocks of the, uh, the, the Milers Club and he's now on the national stage. Clarky, brave once again, fearless. He'll come through just under that 29.30 mark. His teammate Hayne just with him. Well, that's phenomenal from Matt Clark. That is so hard to keep going after you've put yourself out there like that. And to be able to sprint down to the line is a great performance. And Andre Waring, he comes off a big training block at Perisher. He goes up, he puts his mind to it, he comes back, and that is the race of his life. So Andre Waring with the silver there. Jack Bruce comes through for a great third place. But it's all Jack Rayner as he goes back to back. And I believe Nick Wall has our Australian 10,000 metre champion with him. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. Yes, I am down here with Jack. He's gone back to back. He gave us an amazing list of champions there, Mitch, that have done that double before. Jack, there's a, a prestigious list in front of you uh, tonight. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm well aware of the list. It's pretty extensive, but yeah, stoked to etch my name up once, once more. So the race was pretty slow early. We, everyone let uh, Geordie go there. He sort of put about 50 metres on you at one stage. There's a few people a bit twitchy in the crowd, maybe not understanding how, how you guys could work as a group and run him down. At any stage there, were you nervous about uh, Geordie getting that 50 metre gap? Uh, not really. <laughs> I knew we'd work him down. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to let him get too far in front, but yeah. So the Australian 10,000 metre championships here at Lakeside, you're a Melbourne boy. You've, you grew up watching this. I saw in the back straight when you were a junior watching the guys go round. You broke through as an under 20 junior champion yourself in Perth nearly, what, nearly 10 years ago now. Um, you've stepped up to the road races, but you've come back to the track. Where, where is that sweet spot for you as an athlete? Still figuring it out, honestly. Um, yeah, I had a couple of years on the roads where I didn't really do any track races besides the Zatapec. So, yeah, I think it just made me so much stronger doing those really big weeks, doing marathon training. And then when it was time to go back to the track, it really translated in that strength in the back end of the race. Now, training partner, Brett Robinson, just took down a Australian marathon record, a long-standing one on the weekend. Of course, the name De Costello, he took off there. The 10,000 metre Australian record at some stage, is one of those ones that you've eyed off, you know. It's a reasonable athlete that holds at the moment. Do you reckon it's one you can take down in the future? The 10K? Oh, who knows? <laughs> I forgot it. I know you do. <laughs> Are you going to keep Lauren? That's the question. I would love to, yeah. I would love to break 27 minutes one day. So, uh, yeah, something I've got my eye on. Yeah, great. Jack, look, we appreciate it here. Do you, the crowd on the track there, we heard your name being called as you went around the bend. What was it like running in front of you again? A Victorian crowd, a lot of your mates. Oh, it's ecstatic. Like, it's so good. I love how everyone's on the track for the 10K. You don't really get that too often. So, yeah, the support each lap really means a lot. So, again, thank you very much, our Victorian and Australian 10,000 metre champion, Jack Rayner.